You've underestimated everything I've been through. I think you can't imagine all the things that I can do. Hello, everyone. In today's episode, we're going to take on the legendary Chinese restaurant experience featuring General Tso's chicken with two types of rice and egg rolls. This is a level 2 video, probably one of the easiest level 2s there are, but still a level 2. The chicken itself is a level 1, but timing it with the steamed rice can be a little tricky, hence the level bump. For this video, I'll focus in on General Tso's chicken, including the timing for the rice. There is a separate video on the details of steamed rice, which covers making it a bit more. If you never used a rice cooker or would like a refresher, then you might want to look at that video first. Otherwise, let's proceed. As for the main entree itself, it's a fried chicken dish, typically made with cubed chicken thigh, and then covered in a sweet and spicy sauce, served with rice, broccoli, and whatever else you happen to order from the menu. Wait. Menu? Yeah, this is one of those dishes that traces its roots back to Chinese restaurants. In 1973, Chef Peng Chang Kui began serving this dish from his restaurant. This was one of those pre-internet things gone viral, because in 50 years it has gone from a table in an East New York restaurant to being available coast to coast. You can get it as a bottle of sauce, frozen TV dinners, delivered fresh to your door, Oh, and guess what? Restaurants? Yeah, they're still a thing. The stuff you will need. Did you guess that you would need chicken to make this? Hope so, otherwise you weren't paying attention. Yeah, this is the specific chicken that I like, but if you have other preferences, then go for it. Keep in mind, any flavor in the breading will augment the flavor profile of the sauce. Hey, what do you know? Sauce, we were just talking about you. There are plenty of options and brands for this. This is the one I like, so ironically it's the one that I have. You can swap this with different brands and flavors if you prefer. Remember, if you're mixing products, try a small sample on one or two pieces of the chicken. Make sure you like it before you start coating the whole thing. I've had some chicken and sauce that just didn't pair too well, so it's going to be a little trial and error. Hey, a cookie sheet. It holds tinfoil real nice. Tinfoil? It cleans up real fast. As in, you throw the mess out. Cooking spray? Optional. I find that it helps the breading from sticking, but this particular chicken doesn't really need it. Depending on the product you're using, you may or may not want to consider this. A bowl and spatula. The spatula is great for moving hot pieces of meat. The bowl will help when you're coating the meat with the sauce. As you will see in the video, I will also use the bowl to uh, mix the chicken up a bit. The oven, with the rack set in the second from the top slot. I find that in order to, you know, have hot food, something has to make it hot. Mitts in the pot holder will help you avoid the hot factor. Don't want to get burned egg rolls. In following with the uh, true Chinese restaurant experience, I'm making these as a side dish. This is something that has many options from brand and vendor, the meat used, and if you look through the supermarket, you might find some other side dishes you prefer. Now, depending on the type of rice that you're going to want with this, you might want the rice cooker. Steamed rice is a very popular side dish. Microwavable fried rice. There is no easy level one way to make fried rice other than taking it as a pre-made bag and tossing it in the microwave. I'll make a video at a later point making steamed rice into fried rice, but that would be at least a level two video, so it'll be a little bit. And if you're lucky, you can make a great plate of General Tso's chicken along with rice and a side just like this. Now, let's get cooking. I'm going to start off by preheating the oven to 375. Check the uh, product that you're using, make sure that it's the same temperature. If you're going to be making steamed rice, you may want to have the dry rice measured out 
and in the rice cooker bowl, but without the water, and have the base where you plan to use it, but still unplugged, at least for now. Then we'll take the cookie sheet and we'll put some tinfoil on it. If you're using a different type of chicken, then you may want to use some cooking spray. We'll place some chicken on the tin foil, and we'll keep it spaced out so that it, it can heat evenly. If you will be making egg rolls, then place them on the cookie sheet as well. I will place them along the back of the sheet so that they are the furthest inside the oven. This will often say to use a higher temp and for a shorter period of time, so I'm kind of ad-libbing it here. My method may not represent the product's intended outcome, but still tastes good and dips well in sauce. I'm happy. When the oven hits the correct temperature, place the cookie sheet with your chicken and egg rolls inside. Uh, the egg rolls should be towards the back of the oven. Set the timer for 15 minutes and wait. This is what I call the loop, as we're going to be doing the same thing a few times over. This is when the timer goes off. We'll check the chicken, stir it around a little. I will use the bowl to uh, mix it all up and make sure that, you know, it's spread out evenly on the cookie sheet. If you're going to be making steamed rice, this is when you should start that process. I find that steamed rice takes about 25 minutes for two rice cooker cups. So when the chicken has about 30 minutes or, you know, give or take, it's a great time to start it. In general, I find that this takes about 45 minutes to get where I want it to be. After about 25 minutes of total time in the oven, I'll cut the egg rolls in half. This is just to help make them a little crispier. I like it. This is optional. When you're comfortable with the uh, level of chicken crispiness, turn off the oven. The rice cooker should be completed at this point, so unplug it and move the rice to the side. If you're making the microwavable fried rice, I find that it takes about five minutes. So this is the point where I would start making that. Now, I'll place the chicken in the bowl and I'll pour on a little bit of the sauce. It will stay crispy for a little bit, but not too long. You'll want to add the sauce just before you're about to serve. Otherwise, the breading will get a little soggy. You can use a spatula or a fork to mix it up. I find the spatula helps, a fork is quick. Either way, the main goal is to get the chicken coated with the sauce so that it spreads evenly. Now, we'll start plating things. We'll add some of our rice, and we'll add our side dish, some of the chicken, any dipping sauces that we may want, and we'll call it dinner. Now, I don't know about you, but this looks a lot like a Chinese restaurant experience to me, but at home. These are some delicious plates of General Tso's chicken with steamed rice, General Tso's chicken with fried rice, egg rolls, and even mini egg rolls. And that looks like victory. The last tip I can give you on this is to rinse the bowl real quick before you sit down to eat. It will help keep the sauce from drying on and getting crusty. Everything else can wait until afterwards. And until next time, Remember to cook the easy way. If you find this video entertaining, then like, share, and subscribe. Everything I work for is resting on this moment. Don't know what I love more, the fight or the focus. I'm always in the shadows, hardly know that I exist. Think you're the best, but get ready for the plot twist. Watch this!